The fantasy playoffs begin in just hours with the 49ers and the Seahawks. Welcome to Starter Sit for the eight AFC home games here on Fantasy Football Today on your Thursday edition. Adam Azer with Heath Cummings and Jamie Eisenberg. Do you guys have a lot of players going tonight across your many leagues? Big game for you tonight? Um, Trying to think. I'm McCaffrey, yes. Forgot nice. to the 49ers for a second. I don't um, have, have McCaffrey in two leagues. One, sorry, one, one's a buy. So, uh, one, one league tonight, and I think only Seattle player that I have. I have Walker on a league with a buy, and I have thankfully, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, Metcalf also in a league with a buy. I have a lot of McCaffrey and a lot of Lockett, but as I said last week, it's pretty much. Um, Ricky Bobby around here, first or worst. So not a lot of teams playing this week. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of eyes. Good. Yeah, you know, hopefully if, if you don't have Christian McCaffrey, hopefully the McCaffrey manager in your league is on a bye because he might just destroy the Seahawks tonight. Um, well, anyway. I got a note, speaking of your leagues, Heath, first or worst. Um, did you happen to win, I didn't confirm this, one of your undefeated weeks in the IDP league by a scoring change? Yes, David Gunn, a tie. Uh, fantasy football Hall of Famer or fantasy Hall of Famer, um, does some work for the Athletic. He sent me a note after I sent the the playoff matchups. By the way, have you sent the playoff matchups in the Dynasty League yet? Nope. Yeah, good job. Um, <laughs> uh, he sent a note that that uh, he thought that since you work at CBS and the, and the site of CBS that you fixed it so that you you won the matchup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even if he had had a tie, it would have been an unbeaten season, which is still pretty good. It's still pretty good. No, it's okay. You know, I, most people would take it. It's fine. Uh, anyway, let's. Uh, we got a lot of games to talk about today. A lot of players to talk about. Real quick, San Francisco minus three. What's your pick tonight with the spread? I think the 49ers cover. It's uh, it, it's tough. You know, primetime home home underdogs are always you know tough to go against. So we'll see. And Seattle's got their back against the wall. But the the only thing that makes me concerned about San Francisco is it's it's Purdy's first road start. You know, so. You know, that place will be loud. It'll be tough. Uh, he's not 100%. No Debo. So there are some things working against them. But, man, that Seattle defense is just really struggling right now. Yeah, I'm going to go Seattle on the money line. Money line. Oh, I think, okay. uh, All the things Jamie said, one team must win this game. One team can win the division without winning this game. Um, I'm going to take the Seahawks to win. I think the Niners clinch the division with a win, right? They do. Yeah. They clinch the division with any win over the next four weeks, I think. Well, uh, they can put the nail in the coffin tonight. All right, let's talk about players we love. Jamie, who is the start of the week for Week 15? Uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Um, you know, obviously playing the matchup here against the uh, the Texans. They are the worst team in terms of most fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs. They have given up the most touchdowns to running backs, 18 total. Uh, I like, obviously, what Pacheco has been doing. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's clearly the running downs guy for the Chiefs, and the fact that he's got five catches over the last two weeks is fun, too. So... 90 total yards or a touchdown in, in three straight games. Um, you know, I, I think he uh, – sorry, four, four straight games. Um, I think he uh, he keeps it going, you know, has a chance to be, I think, a top 10 running back this week if he can have one of those 100-yard touchdown type of games with still, you know, two or three catches. So love the setup for him. Yeah, six catches in his last three games, which is nice for Pacheco, three last week. And not exactly running more routes, but he's getting more targets. I hope that can, can stick. Do you like Pacheco or Dobbins in another good matchup? I like Pacheco better, uh, but I like both. You know, they're very close. Um, I, I think Pacheco gets a nod in PPR because of what you just said, you know, the fact that he's getting more involved in the passing game. Uh, but it would not surprise me if they have a similar stat line, you know, very similar, to, I think, to what Dobbins gave you last week. You know, could could see 120 total yards for Pacheco, maybe about 120 yards and a touchdown. Uh, so very good setup for him. I, I just think the the concern for me is I, I think Dobbins will still share a little bit more, you know, even though McKinnon's going to have his role. But, you know, Gus Edwards could also have 10, 10 to 15 carries in this game, too. Heath, who do you love this week? Uh, Terry McLaurin, giant slayer. He has uh, averaged seven catches for 97 yards in six career games against this defense. Washington coming off a bye. The Giants coming off a spanking. I think uh, this game will be uh, lopsided. McLaurin makes at least one big play deep, maybe two. I read that this is the second time in the last 30 years that a team gets to play another an opponent twice in a row. It's such BS. Uh, but that's what the commanders get. They get the Giants for the second straight game with a bye week in between. Just, ah. Who, who, who's, 
whose three game stretch is more brutal? The Giants having to go Commanders, Eagles, Commanders, or the Dolphins having to go three straight road games, San Francisco, Chargers, Buffalo. Oh, the definitely. Dolphins by a mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Commanders are that good? Yeah, definitely the Dolphins. Is it? I think so. Yeah, I mean the I Commanders mean, the Giants, are that, that, that's tough to go division opponent three straight weeks, and two of them <laughs> or two of those games being the same team. That is a disadvantage for sure. Uh, players to avoid. Jamie, who's a sit this week? Um, I would like to sit, speaking of the Dolphins, Tua. Uh, the weather is not going to be conducive, I think, for him. Uh, if the snow is expected in Buffalo, I think it could be up to seven inches last time I saw. Um, he's not playing well, clearly, at the moment. And the Bills' defense is, uh, I'm sure, A, uh, you know, A, they're playing well. B, I'm sure the whole entire Bills team is a little salty after losing to Miami in week three. And so I think Tua is going to have a little bit of a rough day. Would you start Mike White over him? I would start Mike White over him, yes. Would you start Jared Goff over him? I would not. Uh, Jared Goff, in his road games this season, do you know what he's averaging in six point per passing touchdown leagues? Yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot to say about that, <laughs> but I know he's had two games with like less than five points. I think he's had three games maybe with less than seven points. Uh, so I don't know what he's averaging, but I know it's it's bad. He is averaging in five road games this season, 8.6 fantasy points per game. Yeah. That's terrible. That's, that's bad. But there, there's a lot behind that, though. And the Jets are really good. They are really good. And the weather's going to be bad there. Too. I mean, I, not, it's not going to be like Buffalo bad, but it's going to be cold. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to want to go to that Jets-Lions game. So you're sitting Tua, but you're also sitting Goff. Uh, yes. Heath, who are you sitting? I would like to stay away from Mike Evans. Um, just not been the same guy for the last month plus. No more than five catches in a game. No more that hasn't reached 60 yards since week eight. Obviously, we know the touchdown woes hasn't got into the end zone since week four. And Tom Brady's not the same guy. Evans doesn't look like the same guy. I, uh, I'd be pretty worried about Evans in this spot. He's a low end touchdown dependent number three wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, and I'm, I'm totally with you, but do you think we feel differently about Evans if that Donovan Smith holding call is not called and he gets the long touchdown? He'd probably be in the Gabe Davis range for me if that had happened. Yeah, I'd have him up at the high end, number three wide receiver, but still boom bust. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about two weeks ago? Also, Evans had, he drew something about like a 40 yard penalty right near the goal line on pass interference. It looked like he had the guy beat. So that's the problem with, with players who are so reliant on the deep ball. He's not getting the end zone targets anymore. Uh, you know, you could make a case for them, but they just have to connect. They haven't been also a good secondary, you know, even without uh, a Uzi, you know, they're still playing really well they're Fifth in the league great. in terms of his fantasy points. Lock yep. So Pacheco is a start. McLaurin is a start. Those are the players we love. Tua is a sit for Jamie. Heath, did you agree on that? Start a sit Tua if you can. I, I would not sit him for Mike White. So I don't think I can call him a sit. He's a low in number one quarterback. I think I've got him ninth or 10th. Um, definitely lower than where he's been over the last month. But I'm surprised you don't think White has a higher ceiling. I have a hard time when Tua's got Waddle and Tyreek saying anybody has a higher ceiling. And I think the weather might be a little bit overblown. Um, yeah. And uh, what was I going to say on that regard? I don't remember. Oh, it's, I think it's his first time playing in snow. We talked about yesterday that he's been in, in cold before, but snow, I don't know. I don't know, whatever. I don't think he's when, And I don't know, like, if I've seen differing reports. The last thing I saw was one to three inches. If it was like it's going to be snowing blizzard-like conditions during the game, that's a different thing than if the day, for that entire day, the forecast calls for one to three inches of snow. It might not even snow during the game. All right, we have to talk about something that I don't really want to talk about, but it has to be brought up. F. Driscoll, the tight end. The man who has one target in his career. Why do I want to bring it up? This is awesome. I hate it. He is so tight end. Fun. Chaos is fun. <laughs> he has tight end eligibility on Yahoo. Thankfully, I not picked him up. up. Yes, you did. Of course. Are you going to start him over? Uh, so I'm in a tough spot with uh, my running backs. So I, I didn't really have a lot of depth on this team, and I just lost Damian Pierce. So I picked up Rex Burkett. So I could be at a little bit of a disadvantage depending on what happens on Saturday. And so um, my choice right now is between Marquise Brown, who I don't really like this week, and Driscoll. And so if I'm chasing points come Sunday, I'm going to put in Driscoll as a flex. Okay. So he played half the snaps, and Davis Mills played half the snaps. 
he played almost he played every red zone snap, I believe, for the Texans. They split the so they split the quarterback duties, but Driscoll was mostly a rusher. He threw six passes. He had 36 rushing yards. He did throw a touchdown. Um I I, I am concerned because they were winning for almost that entire game at Dallas. It was surprising. I don't think it's going to happen again. I don't know what happens if they get blown out by the Chiefs, which is a distinct possibility here. Does you know he could be the garbage time QB? I don't think so. I, I think he's the gimmicky running the ball quarterback. I think if they have to throw, 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 I wouldn't you agree that it would be more Davis Mills? I think their MO is to lose. <laughs> I don't think that's a big surprise. Uh, so I would not be surprised if um, if they get a little wacky and they play Jeff Driscoll, start the game. <laughs> I mean, who knows? So where would you rank him among tight ends? Uh, oh, low. Very low. Um, full, full we, we PPR, can't rank him as a tight end, though. Right. Full PPR, he'd be 15 to 20. Non-PPR, he'd probably be 5 to 10. Okay. Because in non-PPR, like, if you score six points. That's a good point. I should you're a top my... 10 tight end. Yeah. Okay. So uh, would you start Jeff Driscoll or Gerald Everett in non-PPR? Driscoll. Dr- Driscoll. Yeah, Everett, I, I I don't ever want to start him, but, you know, he's, he catches four to five passes almost every week in PPR, and it's just a separate aside. And turns it into three non-PPR fantasy points. <laughs> Non-PPR, yeah, no, he's useless. But in full PPR, I think he scored 7.8 or more PPR fantasy points in, like, five of his last six games, and that's with no touchdowns in that stretch. So, um, you know, just some just a little note there. Okay, it is a great time of year, of course. The Knicks have won five in a row. You can follow them on the CBS Sports app. But uh, we have a lot of sports going on. We got bowl games. We got obviously NFL in full swing, basketball, hockey, World Cup, all of it. You can follow on the CBS Sports app. Lightning fast live scoring for every pro and college football game and all major sports, of course. You can track your favorite teams and get some breaking news alerts. That's how I get my breaking news on the CBS Sports app. And you can watch live sports as well. And you can watch CBS Sports HQ. You can do so many things. On the CBS Sports app, it is totally free when you have an iPhone, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, the easiest way to keep your finger on the pulse of every game that matters. And remember, if a game's on CBS, uh, probably CBS Sports Network as well, you can watch that right there on the app. News and notes. Okay, there's so much here. I'm going to try not to slow this show down. Brock Purdy was listed as limited in practice. We don't, I guess we don't know for sure that he's going to play, but we're expecting he's playing. him to play. Okay, all right. Uh, he's Jamie says he's playing, so he's playing. Uh, Tyler Huntley practiced in full. That's good. He's playing. I don't know about that. They got to get him out of the concussion protocol. They got a Saturday game, but I don't know if if Huntley plays. Where would you? Let's if if you knew Huntley and Purdy were playing. Well, let me let me ask you a question. How many times has a player in the concussion protocol practiced in full and then not played? I believe Joe Mixon. That was the first name I thought of. I think he did. Um. That's the only one I can think of. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it doesn't. It hasn't happened. Well, just, they had a better player on their bench than the Ravens do in terms of backups. Look, concussions are weird. Okay, you have to clear the protocol. It's yeah, not, sure. I don't want to make light of it. I apologize. No, it wasn't that. It's just practicing in full isn't the same with a concussion as it is for other injuries. Sure. If who would you rank higher if you knew they were both playing, Purdy or Huntley? Huntley. Huntley. Uh, and, Mike, and as a result of this news, I moved Mark Andrews up. Oh, okay. I got a quote about Mark Andrews. I'll give it to you right now. This is from Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase. He says, Mark Andrews is getting double teamed more than he ever has in a lot of variety of different ways. So that's why he is struggling. You know who else gets double teamed? Who? Travis Kelsey. Probably. You know what else gets double teamed? Cooper Cup. You know what else gets double teamed? Devontae Adams. You know what those guys do? They get open. You know what else happens? Their coaches scheme them up to get open. Do a better job, Greg Roman. All right, all right. They, I think they threw for 104 yards last week at the Steelers. It should be 99 of them to Mark Andrews. Mike White was limited in practice. He insists he's playing. Russell Wilson missed practice. Kenny Pickett still in the protocol. Apparently Mason Rudolph was splitting reps with Mitchell Trubisky. Houston expected to use both quarterbacks. Uh, Cleveland offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt expects Deshaun Watson to throw downfield more going forward. Uh, He's been pretty conservative. They have the Ravens this week. Marcus Mariota is out for the seasons. Patrick Mahomes has a hand injury, but he's fine. Running back news. Aaron Jones practice. He's going to play. Ken Walker is going to play. Where did you end up with Ken Walker in your running back rankings? 25. In PPR, 24 
Yeah, right right behind Najee Harris. So it's like 27, 28. All right. Khalil Herbert could be back next week. Uh, Damian Pierce is out. Jeff Wilson missed practice. They have a Saturday game at Buffalo. He's doing everything he can to get ready. Josh Jacobs was limited. It's a good sign. DeAndre Swift not on the injury report. I don't know what the heck that means because he was taken off the injury injury report on Thursday last week. Um, Damian, oh, this is big. Damian Harris was limited in practice. I tweeted that people should pick up Damian Harris. They were very skeptical. But yeah. why? Why were they skeptical, or why did I tweet that? Yeah, why would they be skeptical? I mean, if he's the lead guy there without Stevenson, that's a top yeah. twenty running back. Because I didn't say that he was limited in practice, so people might not have known that. But also, yeah, the whole situation, right? I mean, if, if Harris is in and Stevenson is out, that would be pretty exciting, right? I don't know if I'd use the word exciting with Damien Harris, but it would be encouraging. It would be somebody that I'd want to start. Okay. I'd uh, have Damien ahead of Najee and ahead of Walker. Yeah, would you start him ahead of, like, Nick Chubb? No. No. Have a CTN? In non PPR for sure. Really in both. I mean, ETN's not catch passes, so yes. Yeah, I think Harris, okay, I think Harris would catch three passes if he played and Stevenson didn't. It would be like a zero sitch. What do you think? I agree. I would take the under on three and the over on zero. Okay. Saquon Barkley practiced in full at wide receiver. Brandon Cooks is likely out this week. Nico Collins missed practice. Chris Moore. Debo Samuel likely out about three weeks. All right, so a few players are eligible to return from IR. Miko Hardman, Hunter Herenfro, and at tight end, Darren Waller. Um, what else we got? Robert Woods missed practice with an illness, and Traylon Burks is still in the concussion protocol. Jacoby Myers was limited. That's a good sign. Corey Davis missed practice. He's in the concussion protocol. Kadarius Tony was limited. T. Higgins was limited, guys. If you have to choose between... Ayuk tonight, well, any wide receiver tonight, the big three wide receivers, or T. Higgins, if he gets in another limited session, what are you doing? Uh, you can't risk it after what happened last week. So I think you got to play the three big guys, which would be Juwan Jennings, Marquise Goodwin, and Ray Ray. <laughs> okay. Uh, definitely lock it in Metcalf because um, I might have those guys ahead of him anyway. Um, Ayuk, it would depend on who else I had. Right. Uh, Chase Claypool mispractice, Cortland Sutton mispractice, DJ Moore practice in full. A tight end, Dallas Goddard. He's another guy. Sorry, I forgot about him. He's eligible to return from IR. He's hopeful to play this week. We'll find out more as we progress through the week. Darren Waller, Waller eligible. Are you ranking Darren Waller, guys? Uh, we are going to by the end of the day. Okay. And he will be and ranked. Goddard and Renfro and Hardman. And Goddard and Waller, will they both be like top eight? Uh, most likely, yes. Top 10 for sure. Okay. Yeah, it got her for sure. Waller might be in that. I'm going to push him up into the top 12 range because his name's Darren Waller. Um, like he might be 12th or 11th, but I think Goddard's probably around eight. I don't know if I would start either one over Dolchitz, for example, this week. Okay. And it, what about Najoku and Ingram? Uh, no, I would start Najoku and Ingram over them. Yes. They're just, I would start Komet over better, them as well. Better situations given the fact that they've been playing. Okay, Pat Fryermuth mispracticed with a foot injury, but he expects to play. Hayden Hurst is doubtful. Daniel Bellinger expects to play. On the offensive line, Tampa Bay offensive tackle Tristan Wirfs. Wirfs is not expected to play. Raiders offensive lineman Alex Bars mispractice. And New England offensive tackle Isaiah Wynn mispractice. On defense, the big ones that I'm following are Houston. Their two top cornerbacks are Stingley's been out. Steven Nelson left last week. They both mispractice. They're at Kansas City, and they allow the fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. But so you think if the, if both those guys are out, then maybe we could start Mahomes? I think so. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably start him anyway, but I would feel a lot better. Um, Rita Vea is likely out this week. Run plugger for the for the uh, Bucks. So that's good news for Mixon. Yeah, Derwin if James. there was no Higgins and no Boyd, you might start both P. Ryan and Mixon this week. And no Hurst. Right. Uh, Derwin James is day to day for, but you know what? He, that was the case last week, basically. And P Ryan had what? Like two catches was a top 20 running back. They scored a touchdown oh. in the, he had what? Six touches, seven touches. Uh, you know what? Let's hope Higgins plays. 
Uh, Christian Fulton, Tennessee's top cornerback. He missed practice, but defensive end Danico Autry was limited. Arizona defensive lineman Zach Allen is out this week. Good news for the Broncos. Uh, for the Giants, Adore Jackson still out. Leonard Williams, though, defensive tackle. He was limited in practice. Patriots cornerback Jack Jones missed practice with a knee injury. Denver defensive end Randy Gregory was designated to return from IR. Their pass rush has been pretty bad since the Bradley Chubb trade. It would be helpful to get Gregory back. They got Arizona this week. And Ryan Neal, very important safety for the Seahawks. And Al Woods, starting defensive tackle. Both questionable. I don't think, I don't know. We'll see. Both questionable for tonight's game, but those are two key pieces on the Seahawks defense that would certainly make things easier for the 49ers if Ryan Neal and Al Woods are out. Whew, okay, I don't think that was so bad. Let's go to one question for each game. Miami at Buffalo. Are you starting only Allen, Diggs, and Tyreek Hill in this game? Yes. I, I think Raheem Mostert said we should start him if Jeff Wilson's out. What did he say? It was a he snow game, and that's, a, that's for running backs. That I guess he ran for 200 yards in the snow in Buffalo in the past, and he is very excited about Saturday's game. Hmm. What about Waddle? I'm starting him. Yeah, you're starting Waddle, I guess. Okay. Uh, Dallas is at Jacksonville. Starter sit Travis Etienne. You're starting him. Low end starter. Why do I? Why am I starting him? I don't want to start him. Well, I mean, if you have Pacheco and maybe Zana the night, I mean, they're both kind of in questionable spots. Both those guys. Um, obviously, Damien Harris, as we alluded to before, you can start him if he's if he's good to go. And there's no Stevenson. Um, I know there's many other scenarios of guys that you might have picked up the last couple of weeks. Could be forgetting somebody, but I mean, you know, ETN's going to get a lot of work. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, Detroit at the Jets. Which big name running backs would you start Bam Knight over? You'd start Bam Knight over blank. Only really Harrison Walker for me. I'm a little nervous about him. I'd start him over ETN. I'd start him over um, Najee Harris. Uh, we talked about this yesterday, but Heath's higher on Bam Knight than certainly than Jamie, and I think Dave as well. Let me just double check on that. Jamie's got the run defense has been good. If he's not going to get the involvement in the passing game, it's going to be a rough day for him, I think. Okay, Kansas City at Houston. Chris Moore or Mike Evans, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson? Would you start Chris Moore over any of those guys? Just DJ Moore. All right, looking forward to making a passionate case for Chris Moore. <laughs> Actually, the, the Driscoll thing terrifies me with Chris Moore. But uh, Arizona at Denver. Do you trust Jerry Judy if Brett Rippon is the quarterback? And remember, the Cardinals pretty good against number one receivers typically. Do you trust Jerry Judy if Brett Rippon's the quarterback? I think Jerry Judy had one of his best games of the season with Brett Rippon at quarterback. 11 targets, 16 fantasy points without a touchdown. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, as long as Sutton is out, which that's the way it's trending. Um and haven't they been bad against number one receivers the last two weeks? Last two games? If they have, well, not against the Patriots. If they have, it's, you know, Byron Murphy's been out for three straight games, I think. So uh, he practiced a little bit last week, didn't play. If he comes back, it would be a little bit different. And the thing is, for Judy, uh, he played 85% of his snaps outside last week without Cortland Sutton. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, the Patriots are at the Raiders. How do you approach the, Patri the Patriots running backs, Heath? I, if. Ramondre plays, he's a must-start top 12 running back. If he doesn't and Damian Harris plays, then he is a number two running back and Pierre Strong is a low-end flex. If both Ramondre and Damian Harris miss, then Pierre Strong's a high-end flex. Kevin Harris is right behind him as a mid-range flex. Okay, so the, the running backs you would be excited to start if they played would be just Stevenson or Stevenson and Harris? Excited, probably just Stevenson, but I'd be fine starting Harris as a number two. Damien. Yeah, Damien. Yeah. Baltimore or Cleveland, J.K. Dobbins or Nick Chubb? Uh, Chubb, but it's close. Heath? Yeah. Chubb? Okay. Same thing. And Tennessee is at the Chargers. Do you like the Titans passing game in this contest? 
Uh, do you ever like the Titans passing game? I, I think Tannehill has kind of proven who he is. Like, he'll find a way uh, when he's on to get you, you know, 21 to 23 fantasy points, which I think could be a case this week if they're chasing points. Um, I think Chig Conquo, based on the position that he plays, like, I would start Waller and Goddard over Oconquo, for example, you know, to go back to that conversation. But I, I, I think Oconquo is in a pretty good spot based on 10 plus PPR points his last two games with Traylon Burks leaving with a concussion two games ago. If Burks plays, I think he's in the discussion as a number three receiver, but uh, it's hard to say he's going to play the fact that he's missed practice now again on Wednesday in the concussion protocol still. And then Robert Woods dealing with an illness might help, you know, Nick Westbrook Akina, but, you know, how many people are trusting him in the in the fantasy playoffs at this point? You know, he's he would be a notch below Chris Moore and in the same discussion as the Rams guys, for example, you know, in terms of trust. Uh, if if he's the the lone wolf there, so you know Tannehill's just losing guys left and right at this point. Yeah, I think if Burks is out, it's pretty much just the tight ends, and I'd have a Conquo over Austin Hooper, but they'd both be between tight end ten and tight end fifteen for me. I really want uh, Burks in. <laughs> if he plays, I'd be you know he's just he looks like he's really good. He's making big plays. The Chargers give up a lot of big plays. It would be it would be interesting for sure. Um. I don't know. Where would he end up in your rankings? Where would you rank uh, Burks if he plays? 36. Yeah, maybe a spot or two higher, but in the probably somewhere similar to like Mike Evans and Gabe Davis and, you know, slightly ahead of Chris Moore. Okay. Well, boy, do I have a gift for you, people. Holiday season. Get yourself something nice. Get You're yourself. Sing again? I'll sing again. No, oh, that's no. not a gift. I will carol. Uh, Indochino. Oh, now your neighborhood has started right now. Go. My, my, uh, my gift to you is Indochino. Fifty dollars off any purchase of three hundred ninety nine dollars or more at Indochino.com. I N D O C H I N O dot com. Use the promo code F F T. If you need a suit for anything, a wedding, a job interview, just going to work, just need a suit, whatever. An Indochino suit is the best suit you will find, you will buy. You get to customize every detail, and it's really not that expensive. Um, their made-for-you suits start at just $449, which is a terrific deal for something of this quality. And you're going to love the process of putting a suit together and making it yours, making it special just to you, and it's going to fit you so perfectly. Think about the money that you're going to spend at a tailor if you cheap out and buy a suit somewhere else. You don't have to do that with Indochino. And it's more than just suits, by the way. They have fitted shirts, for example, that start at just $89. So I love my Indochino suit. You will love yours. Please get one. I get a lot of people saying, hey, I got my wedding coming up. Can I have your Indochino promo code? Whatever it may be, the promo code is FFT. Design your perfect suit with Indochino to get 50 bucks off any purchase of $3.99 or more. Use the promo code FFT at Indochino.com. That is I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code FFT. And we go to the games. We start with Miami and Buffalo, and we know weather could be a factor here. Um, So... Your stat of the game is, I think, about the running backs here. Let's talk about the Dolphins running backs. The Bills' defense has been a little bit leaky in their last seven games. They've allowed 12 or more PPR fantasy points to six running backs and 15 or more PPR fantasy points to four running backs in their last seven games. So they have not been great against the run. Uh, Heath, you talked about Mostert saying we should start him, but how do you feel about Dolphins running backs in this matchup? I don't really love them. Um most it's a high end flex right now without Wilson. If Wilson plays, the whole situation just gets even less appealing. They'd both be kind of low end flexes. I think I, th- I guess you'd have to lean towards Mostert as being the best. Um, it's just can the Dolphins stay competitive in this game? Because I'm sure, or I would think, they would like to be able to run the ball in bad weather against Josh Allen and keep him off the field. Um, but they've been really awful running the ball the last two weeks and, and haven't really looked like they wanted to that bad. No, they have the uh, fourth fewest running back carries in the NFL, the fifth fewest red zone running back carries. They have only 14 carries from the 10-yard line or closer for running backs. That's fourth fewest in the NFL. So it's not a great offense for running backs. If they didn't go to the to the Chargers and run last week, hopefully they can learn from their lesson and try to run the ball a little bit better here. But uh, I guess it's safe to say to fade them if Wilson plays. And if Wilson's out, then you have a bigger decision to make. Um and that's how you have it ranked right now, right? With Wilson out? Yeah. We do not have Wilson ranked. I do like uh, your new phrase, though. Learn from your lesson. <laughs> that's what I said? Yes. That, 
The Dolphins are a little bit like the guy who gets like super good at Madden because there's three plays that he has that nobody knows how to stop. Yeah. And then somebody's figured out how to stop those plays, and let's see what the Dolphins do. Okay. I, yeah, I agree. It's a great analogy. Um, okay, so Tua. Tua or the uh, the Ca- the Cowboys-Jaguars quarterbacks? The Cowboys-Jaguars quarterbacks for me. I, I, I think it's, you know, Tua's been 17 points or less in three straight games. He's had, you know, some some tough matchups, clearly. You know, and, and like he said, you know, teams – are figuring out how to defend them. Um, It's also coincided with the offensive line woes. I know they got Armstead back last week, but they're still dealing with the Austin Jackson injury. You know, so there's a lot of things at play here. And, you know, again, you have now elements. You have a team that has already played them once. That's a pretty good defensive team. And I I think it's going to be a a difficult day for him. You know, can he still get you 18 to 20 points? I think that's safe. Uh, He's going to have one of his best days. I'd be very surprised. You know, I think it'll take some fluky situations for that to happen. So, for me, he's a number number two a quarterback this week. Okay, and uh, he's got a Lawrence him. to a deck. Okay, um, right now the the ones I struggle with are Mike White, Dak, and Geno Smith. Right now, I've got Tua just ahead of Geno Smith. I think I think this matchup's probably better for him than than the 49ers is for Geno. Okay, yeah, Tua only scored uh, thirteen points against the Bills. I think it was week three, but he. Barely threw the ball. He had 123.8 passer rating through 18 passes. Well, that was the back injury game. But he still uh, played 90% of the snap. I think yeah, he, yeah. He only missed a couple snaps. Yeah, no, he came back in with what he was probably concussed um, when they said he was had a back injury. Right. Well, either way, um, he only threw 18 passes, but he, he played very well against them. Well, if you, if you also recall that game, the Bills dominated plays in time of possession. They absolutely held the ball mm-hmm. forever. And the Dolphins won. And the Dolphins won. That's what I'm saying. Like, this just feels like you beat us. You surprised us. You were the first team to beat us. And now we're going to punch you in the face. Hard to feel great about the Dolphins after what we saw the last two weeks. I understand that. Um, okay. Running backs, we just, thought, we just discussed. Start Tyreek Hill. All right. So, Jalen Waddle. Would you start, if Cortland Sutton's out, would you start Jerry Judy or Jalen Waddle? Uh, I mean, I'm closer right now with Judy to Tyree Kill than I am Judy to Waddle. Oh, wow. Okay, so looking great for for Waddle. 17% or lower target share in three of his last four games. He's not getting a lot of targets except for that Houston game. I don't really have much to say. I mean, it's not like an impenetrable matchup. The good wide receivers usually do very well against He's a low end number two wide receiver. Okay, but I'm nervous about it, you know? Like, I don't want to lose my league because of the Dolphins' offense. And- well, I, I think, like, Waddle, for the majority of the season, has been a borderline number one receiver, if not a number one receiver. Uh, for me right now, he's a borderline number two receiver to number three receiver, you know? So um, I think he's still starting him. You know, you got to have a pretty good situation to to bench him. Uh, but I would start Christian Watson over him. I would start um, Michael Pittman and PPR over him, uh, Judy over him. Uh, Garrett Wilson over him, um, you know, uh, several several other guys, but for the most part, they've been in the same range. All right, start uh, Josh. Sit Mike Kosicki. Start Josh Allen. You guys have him top four. He hasn't been great lately. J- for people out there, hey, why should I start Josh Allen, Heath? Why should we start Josh Allen? Um, because he hasn't been great lately, and he's still the number two quarterback in fantasy for the season. Um, he has the upside to score 40 fantasy points any week. And... Um, like no one's actually asking that question. <laughs> no, I think I, this I, is a game you know. where he uses his legs quite a bit. People will definitely ask that question if this if the weather's really bad, and the fact that I, the way, what we don't what? have any reason to believe the weather's going to be really bad. Why? It They're could projecting be... ten to fifteen mile an hour winds and one to three inches of snow. That's not good. That's not really bad. That's pretty. That's not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that for him. I think the thing the thing you got to worry about with Josh Allen is is he getting to three passing touchdowns or is he getting multiple rushing touchdowns because he's still you're, you're not benching i mean who you have that you're benching him for you know you're not benching him for fields this week you're not benching him for mike white that would be stupid you're not benching him for you know maybe if you draft it hurts i get it but how many people have that scenario well you know, I, so. like you know most weeks you could make a case for gino i, I, I want to clarify on him. the weather because maybe like i i get the argument that the dolphins and particularly Tua are not going to do well in cold weather but Jamie, if we had Pete on here and we asked him, 
a snow game with no wind, is that better for the offense or the defense? He would 100% say the offense, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, and this guy's played in Buffalo his entire NFL career. Right. He played in Wyoming. You know, this isn't a situation where I, I worry about him. Um, but, I, I again, I, I see your point, Adam. He, he hasn't been the same fantasy quarterback since the elbow injury. There's been some down performances. Um, you know, you've noted a few times that his accuracy has been better, but they just haven't thrown the ball as much. You know, I think it was a Patriots game, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, he was um, great against the Patriots, except his left tackle was terrible and, you know, limited him. But Right, right. So, I mean, there, there are – you know, and, and let's give the Dolphins defense credit. You know, they, they've been a big part of their success this season as well. You know, everybody looks at the offense, but the defense has been sort of carrying them, um, you know, at times this year as well. Uh, I, I think Josh Allen is going to have, you know, not a monstrous game unless he's rushing for, you know, 80 to 100 yards and a touchdown. He's done that against the Dolphins. You know, it's kind of been their Achilles heel in trying to stop him. Um, he's had a lot of big games against them. So, again, I, I think we're just wasting a lot of time talking about starting. Maybe, down, yeah. but but I just like last year, I remember he struggled in some cold weather games. So I don't want to hear that he's Josh Allen and he can't possibly struggle in cold weather games. And like I but, said, but, but that, that's, that's a very bad. fair point. But the weather you, is bad. The over under. Are you sitting going, Josh Allen? No, I'm not sitting Josh Allen. I just okay, that, we, I am we, trying we, to represent the people out there who are going to ask the question. Because that I'm, I know Who it's has asked that question. I know it's going to get asked. People are going to ask about Josh Allen a lot this week, and I mean, maybe not. All because- right, hey, Thomas, post the poll. Would anyone consider benching Josh Allen in Week 15? Yeah, go ahead, post it. Let's see. I bet it's twenty <laughs> percent. I'll take the other. If, I mean, maybe. If, all right, here, here's our bet. If it's under twenty percent, our Kareem Hunt bet is null void. <laughs> oh, I think it's already null and void. Um. <laughs> I'm, I'm validating the people. Like it might strings. be 20% in a blind poll, but there's no way it's 20% when people have been watching this argument for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> They're going to vote against you. I'm going to vote against I'm going to vote against me. It's not against me. I'm just rep- I am a man of the people. I am a man of the people. I am representing the people. What people? Who's Who? Josh Allen? Look, Who? I'm telling you, I get the questions on Sunday morning. It's not going to happen this week because he's playing on Saturday. I get the questions on Sunday morning. I see some people are worried about Josh Allen. And honestly, they've got a right to be. He hasn't been that great for fantasy in See, the last. You're, I think years. you're 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 spinning it the wrong way. People worried about Josh Allen. I think is more. I need forty points to win my fantasy league. Is he going to get them for me? They're not worried about am I sitting Josh Allen? I mean, I get I get some questions. Should I sit? Josh, what was it? It was. It would be different. I, I I swear to you, it would be different. If yeah, Justin there there Fields was there was first, first couple of weeks of elbow injury when Justin Fields was a monster and right. people had that snare. I get it. That, that's fine. This week, first week fantasy playoffs, there's no one that's jumping off the page that you could have added. Trevor Lawrence. Mike White included, as much as people like Mike White. <laughs> Trevor to- Lawrence will be a guy <laughs> where people people ask Trevor Lawrence or Josh Allen. I People will ask that. I will tell Josh Allen to everyone. I'm not saying this to Josh Allen. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Bill's running back. You want to start one? No. No, okay. thank you. Uh, Mostert <laughs> over Singletary over Cook. Okay. Um, bah, 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 bah. Gabe Davis. <laughs> this show is going to be an hour and forty-five minutes. Dear God, I'm Gabe, leaving in an hour, so you better go. Gabe back. Davis. <laughs> um, start or sit. Uh, I would sit Gabe Davis if you can. I think he's a number three wide receiver that you know it, he still has the possibility to win you your week. He also might give you four points from your number three wide receiver, but you can win with four points from your number three wide receiver. I'm, I if think I start I would three start, receivers, I'm starting him. I would start Chris Moore over him. I would not. I don't blame you. I mean, I, I would start Gabe <laughs> Davis, but I'm, they're very close. I think one's like 35, the other was like 40. So they're, it's not a huge stretch for me. Okay. You, you're uh, really going to start Chris Moore over him? I really would start Chris Moore over him. I wish I had, I wish I had that option because I would really do it. Uh, boy, wow. I can't believe I said that out loud. Would what? I really do it? Yeah, I would. This, this, look. This is the, this is the time. You know, we, we've, you probably had these scenarios throughout the course of the season. You can't worry about. I drafted this guy in this spot. I have these expectations for this player. He has been bad. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, you just made a case, Heath, to sit Mike Evans. <laughs> it's the same situation, right? They're, they're both getting targets. They're both getting opportunities. They're both struggling. They're both not producing. They're not finding the end zone. Like, there's no difference to me. Yes, they can win you your week. They've lost you probably five or six. <laughs> you know, so. Right. Well, uh, I, I think it's different when that guy's like when that guy's your number one wide receiver. He can lose you a week if he's your number three receiver. I don't think that loses you a week. 
Why? I mean, you're going to have lots of flexes and number three wide receivers that score in single but, digits. This but week. Chris Moore can also win you your week, too. I mean, they could both end up with four points. So the Dolphins do give up a lot of big plays, but so do the Lions, so do the Browns. And he played them recently, and Gabe Davis stunk against both of them. As of right now, I have Gabe Davis as a flex in a three receiver PPR league. It's going to be him or it's going to be David Montgomery. I'm going to have to decide between the two, and I'm probably oh, going to go Montgomery. David yeah, Montgomery. That one's Montgomery easy. Yeah. So that means I'm starting Dobbins. You do hate Montgomery. So. And I'm starting Christian Watson over Gabe Davis. I do hate Montgomery. I think he's going to be awful this week. But I'm going to Watson start him. Watson is what we hope Gabe Davis would be. I shouldn't say I think he's going to be awful. I think Montgomery could be awful this week. Okay. Uh, that's it for this. Oh, Dawson Knox, starter sit. Sit. I don't want to. You'll go. Okay, we're going to sit him. Let's go to Dallas and Jacksonville. So... There is certainly some optimism, I think, about the Cow- the Jaguars' offense. They've been playing well lately, not so much against Detroit, but they were great against Baltimore. Most of that was late. They were great last week against Tennessee. The Cowboys have allowed the third fewest points. They're one of four teams that are allowing the fewest yards per play in the NFL at 4.8. They have the second most sacks in the NFL. They have the highest pressure rate in the NFL. They had the, held the Vikings to three points, I think, the Lions to six points, the Eagles to 26, which is well below their average, the Bengals to 17. I mean, they're awesome. So convince me that, uh, Heath, you can go first. Convince me that Trevor Lawrence and Christian Kirk and, and Zay Jones are going to be good this week. I'm a little bit nervous about the Jacksonville offense, but Lawrence has been playing out of his mind lately. Zay Jones has double-digit targets in three of his last four games and his wide receiver 15 over the last month. I think if they struggle early, then you're going to get garbage time because I don't necessarily think that their defense is stocking the Cowboys' offense. And if they get going early, then it just turns into a shootout. So either way, I think we're getting 40-plus pass attempts from Trevor Lawrence, and you just kind of have to bet on the fact that he has turned a new page in his career and he's maybe not as good as he's been the last month, but he's taken a new level and he's just a top 10 quarterback that you don't sit. Uh, Would you expect both Christian Kirk and Zay Jones to have seven or more targets? Yes. Well, that brings me to the stat of the game. There have been 11 wide receivers with seven or more targets against the Cowboys. Seven of those 11 have scored 17.7 17.7 or more PPR fantasy points. Huge games. And that includes each of the last four. The ones who did not, the ones who had seven or more targets and did not come through were mostly bad, but Jamar Chase was one. Sterling Shepard, Curtis Samuel, Ben Skoranek, all of that early in the season. So to sum it up, you get a lot of targets. You get seven or more tar- targets against Dallas. You usually come through with a good or sometimes great game. Uh, Jamie, which quarterback do you prefer? I prefer Dak, but it's close. You know, I, I think this Jacksonville secondary is, is certainly beatable more so than the Jaguars, sec- than the Cowboys secondary. Um, and it's also, I think, counting on the fact that the Jaguars offense will show up so that Dak's not just going to hand the ball off 50 times in this game and will be throwing enough. So that's the one area of this Cowboys offense that they have to sort of correct a little bit. You know, Dak's been a little turnover prone. Um, and I think they're trying to work some things out as a, as a passing offense. The addition of T.Y. Hilton is interesting. We'll see if he plays. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Dak's just a little bit safer, but I would not be surprised if Lawrence is better. <sighs> okay. Um, start both Cowboys running backs over ETN? Yep. Both of them are top 10 guys for me with uh, Elliot higher than Pollard. Wow. Top 10. Uh, Schaefer, did you put that poll up for the, the Josh Allen poll? I don't see it. You don't have to. Like, I don't need to be proven wrong, so it's okay. <laughs> it, it's on YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube. Oh, okay. My bad. What are the results so far? Uh, you're getting killed. <laughs> Is it a twenty percent? No, it's not a twenty percent. Let me let me look real quick. I didn't say twenty percent. I said twenty people. Right? <laughs> no, you said twenty percent. It oh, said sixteen percent. Uh, We're fine. We'll get there. Okay. Um. Travis Etienne or David Montgomery? Montgomery. Montgomery. Travis Etienne or Brian Robinson against the Giants? Non-PPR, it's easy. It's Robinson. Uh, PPR, it's close. I'd probably give a nod to Etienne with the hope that he catches a pass. Yep. He usually does. Last week, no catches, no targets. Usually in the two to three catch range. Um, All right. What's tricky in this game? How about Kirk and Zay Jones? Let's talk about them. Do you think Kirk gets 
Trayvon Diggs, and that could be bad because he's done a great job against Lazard, Pittman. He, I don't know if he shut down Justin Jefferson, but he did shadow Justin Jefferson with a terrible game. Um, I, I, that does concern me a little bit with Kirk. Hey, Jamie, your thoughts on those wide receivers? I have Kirk lower this week than I probably have had the last several weeks. A lot of that has to do with not just Zay Jones, but also Evan Ingram's performance. Um, so, you know, I, I think you just look at Lawrence and, and this speaks to what Heath was saying is as he's evolving, he's not just locking in on one guy. He's finding the open receiver. He's reading the field, you know, so his second read is third read, you know, so Kirk may, may be the, the first option on, on a particular route. Uh, but in any event, you know, I, I think you're starting Kirk. It's hard to get away from what his upside could be in, in, in what should be a potential shootout. Okay, man, it's a lot to talk about in this game. Heath. You like both tight end? Which tight end do you like better? And you're starting them both? I'm starting them both. I think I have Schultz one spot ahead of Ingram, but they're both uh, top eight ish guys. How would you guys? How many targets do you think for Ingram? Seven. Seven? Seven. So he's had uh, seven games this season with at least six targets, and his worst game in that situation has been nine PPR points. So. I think this kind of figure that's his floor, which is pretty good, even a yeah. tough match. Uh, how would you guys rank ETN, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones as flexes? Uh, Kirk, Zay, ETN in PPR. I'd probably go Kirk, ETN, Zay, but they're all like Kirk's definitely first. I don't know if you said this. I'm sorry. Zay Jones or Gabe Davis? Davis. Uh, Zay. All right. I think that's basically it. Start CD Lamb. Obviously, start T.Y. Hilton. He has 300 yard games in his career against the Jaguars. Uh, that's a joke. And Michael Gallup. No. Okay. Uh, by the way, Geno Smith or one of these quarterbacks? Uh, these I've, quarterbacks. I've got them really close right now. I have it Lawrence, Geno, Deck. Okay. Oh, Cowboys DST. What do you think? Uh, you're still starting them. I mean, you know, you, you, it's it's the hope that Trevor Lawrence does well, but you know, we've seen him, you know, in 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 just a an, a similar type of matchup. You know, it was in the rain, but he had five turnovers against the the Eagles. It was certainly a different type of player at that point. But uh, anytime you're going to get a quarterback throwing as much as he's probably going to throw in this game, there's going to be the opportunity for turnovers against this type of team. And plus, he'll be dropping back so much, you know, they'll they'll be able to probably hit him a few times. Okay, uh, would you start the Commanders over them? I would, yes. All right. Let's go to the Lions at the Jets. I said to myself, how how is it that Mike White and Joe Flacco have thrown so many passes when they have been the quarterback? Um, the Jets right now are 13th in plays per game. They average 64.4 plays per game. But in the non-Zach Wilson weeks, they are averaging 73.3 plays per game which if they did that over a full season would be number one by a mile. I think the Cardinals lead the NFL with about 68 plays per game. Zach Wilson, just they, they're just slower with him, and they're on the field less probably. So you're seeing so much volume. Well, I, like we talk about White and Flacco both checking down so much. And the, the best way to run a lot of plays, like being fast helps, but the, the more important thing is continually picking up first downs. They don't have a lot of big plays, but they get a lot of first downs. That's a good point. And they are the fifth fast fifth fastest paced team in the NFL. Um okay. This is really an interesting game. H high scoring, low scoring cuz the defenses are playing well, but the Detroit offense has been on a roll, but it's on the road. So, Jamie, high scoring, low scoring, what do you think? Is this a good fantasy game? I think Vegas has it pretty good. I can see 24-20, you know, type of game. Um, you know, so the, the, the thing that I struggle with is the Lions scoring. I think the Jets will score. I certainly think they'll score through the air. And it's just a matter of, you know, will the Lions be able to overcome some of their road deficiencies? Will they be able to run against a very good run defense? And so, you know, they have a lot of things working against them, but their offense has just been fantastic. So we'll see if it translates to leaving the, the comforts of Detroit and playing in some uncomfortable situations against a good defense. So um, I'm a little bit more nervous about the Detroit offense than I am the Jets offense. So who are you confidently starting in this game? Um, confidently starting Amon Ross St. Brown, just I think he's matchup proof. 
I'm confidently starting Garrett Wilson. I think he's been just amazing with everybody not named Zach Wilson. And that is probably it from a confidence standpoint. Now, I think you you can obviously make cases for Bam Knight. You can make cases for DeAndre Swift. You can make cases for – oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you can make cases for, for uh, Swift. You can make cases for – make a case for um, Mike White. But for me, really – and Conklin just because of the position he plays. But outside of that, that's really it. Like, I'm not starting Chark. I'm not there yet with Elijah Moore in terms of must start. And uh, Jamal Williams is very, very scary this week. Yeah, how about you, Heath? What do you think? Same question. I agree with with pretty much. I mean, I would. I think I'm close enough to say I'm confidently starting Knight, and I am starting Swift as a top 20 running back or 24 for sure. Um, Conklin is a, a lo- like right around 12, and so is White. So that's not a confident start at all, but they're startable. I don't want to start Chark or Jamal. But you like Knight better than Swift. Yes. Same. <sighs> All right. We got to talk about Bam Knight a little bit more here. Uh, Bam Knight or Gabe Davis, Zay Jones? Bam. Uh, I would go Zay in PPR, then Bam, then Davis. I would start Knight over Davis in all formats. This Detroit run defense has just been fantastic. It's, it's you know, the thing I, I, I keep going back to with Knight, and, and I've said this to a few people that have asked me about him, is – um. And I've actually had legitimate questions about Knight, unlike your Josh Allen self. <laughs> um, I, I, I think you, you look at it this way. If this was Brees Hall against this defense, how would you feel? And the answer is easy. He's a must-start guy. Yeah. Bam, that is obviously not Brees Hall. But you're seeing a very productive player in this backfield. And so he's 70% of what Brees Hall might be doing, 80%, you know, however you want to you know, gauge it. So I, I think by that reasoning, at least for me, He's a number two running back. Um, can you make cases for other players against him? Clearly. But, you know, you look at some of the guys that they've shut down, you know, Barkley and, and ETN and um, it's – Aaron it's, Jones wasn't even good. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're no joke. They really are no joke. Give them credit. Horrible. You know, oh, my gosh. Dalvin Cook was awful. Uh, oh, he scored. But 15 carries, 23 yards, and a touchdown, one catch for 13 yards. It's seven straight games, single-digit PPR fantasy points for a running back against the Lions. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, amazing turnaround. Um, okay, so by the way, I just want to ask, we can do another poll on this if you want, but this is a team that has recently held Stefan Diggs to 37 yards, Justin Jefferson to 45 yards, um, you know, earlier in the year. So Jamar Chase, Deontay Johnson, Tyreek Hill, Cortland Sutton, Justin Jefferson, Jacoby Myers, Gabe Davis twice, Stefan Diggs once, all 52 or fewer yards. So, do you downgrade Amon Ra St. Brown? Is he maybe something like 15th, you know, instead of fifth? Yeah, I, I, that, that was yeah. one I looked at my rankings uh, at two in the morning last night when I was doing a, a overhaul a little bit from start set that, you know, I felt I had him a little too high, but it's like he's he, he feels like he's just the safest thing for this this offense. So, um, but yeah, I, I think you could certainly make case that Garrett Wilson's in a better spot, Terry McLaurin's in a better spot. Um, CD lambs in a better spot, you know, so there, there's, there's a lot of guys that I have probably ranked a few spots behind him, but again, you're not benching Amara St. Brown, you know, if you right. want to have the Josh Allen right. conversation all over again, we can, but no, <laughs> nobody's benching okay. St. Brown. I think. No, somebody in our chat, Gabriel says, I'll release my entire roster before I bench Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh boy. So yeah, Sharks a sit, uh, Tyler Conklin or Jeff Driscoll. Heath. Conklin and full PPR, Driscoll and none. Mike White or Derek Carr? Mike White. Mike White. The Lions allow, I think, the most fantasy points the, the quarterback. Most. Yeah. Yep. Mike White or uh, you're going to take Geno Smith, right? Uh, not me. I've got Gino just ahead of him right now, but I've got a feeling by the time we get to Thursday night, I might have Mike White ahead of him. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about that, like most of the offense in that game tonight. You made a sigh. You made a sound a sigh, Adam. You would start Gino over Mike White. Yeah, I would. I, I think Why? Mike White. Mike White has a touchdown problem. If you look at his career, he has two games with three touchdown passes. That was awesome. But a lot of times he's at zero or one touchdown pass. He doesn't throw the ball downfield. How field. many games has Mike White started? Six or six okay. like starts or. Yeah, but 
but when but that's when he's an unfair thing to say. If he's he's played six games and he has two games with three touchdowns. Did Dino Smith have a touchdown a, problem before this a, year? A lot of games he's really struggled with. So he's games. Mike White, first of all. And also he you know that the Lions do give up a lot of fantasy points to quarterbacks. A lot of it is rushing. He's um, Mike White, first of all. I mean, what, yeah. how insulting can you be? Uh, uh, so anyway, sorry. Um I, I, I think when you throw a lot of passes and they're short, you get touchdown problems like Tom Brady and, you know, Matt Ryan and all that. Like, so that's what he's doing. He's throwing a lot of passes, but he's mostly yeah, very, only he could be Tom Brady or Matt Ryan. Yeah. So I would, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I, yeah, I, am day day. My, <laughs> I am starting him in my Kyler Murray league, uh, but I don't want to rely on Mike White as my fantasy quarterback but in the playoffs, but and Gino Smith is Gino Smith is an MVP candidate whose team is what? not. No, no, no. He's a fit. Sorry. He's a fantasy MVP candidate and he has played for most of the year. He has played for most of the year, just about as well as any quarterback in football. And I will stand by that. Gino Smith that, has been. That's, that's a fair statement. He's, he's, this year. he's struggled of late. He's, he's admitted that it's been a little bit of a tough go for him because he's, pressing and trying to be more aggressive. He has no run game to support him for the last Struggling month of late because he's throwing interceptions. But meanwhile, he scored, he's scoring 23 or more fantasy points every and single he week. Hasn't done that against the 49ers, but this is going to be, true, but and he was terrible against the Niners earlier, but he will have zero run game tonight. He's going to throw, 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 and he will get his two touchdown passes. That so um, I just want to recap your 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 day so far. So you want to yes. bench Josh Allen? No, I don't. I said no. No, no, no. This is my this is my recap. This is this okay. is my interpretation of your recap? day. Okay. You want to bench Josh Allen? You just said Mike White stinks because he's Tom Brady or Matt Ryan, and that <laughs> Geno Smith is an MVP. <laughs> I mean, if if the Seahawks were better, no one's winning the MVP over Hurts or Mahomes. But Gino's been freaking great this year. He, he has been so good, and he deserves credit for it. He All right, this game's over. He's not Jets, the MVP, though. Jets DSD, starter sit. Uh, low end starter. Oh my gosh, we have got a lot to get to here. We got to take a break. Well, it's I'm glad we've covered all the important things. <laughs> Fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. We got to talk about five games. We'll be right back on fantasy football today. All right, we're back to talk Kansas City at Houston. Start all, sit all. Next game. Nope. There have been 17 wide receivers with seven or more targets against the Chiefs. 15 of them have scored 12, 12 and a half or more PPR fantasy points. I do think you can get that from, from Chris Moore. What about Amari Rogers? Eh, whatever. I don't understand. Like, Amari Rogers was your guy like three years ago. Oh, stop and with he's, that. He's young. Like, Chris Moore's 29 years old and had one good game, and you've decided Dude. that he's a, a must-start wide receiver. Amari Rodgers might be the number one wide receiver in this game. Based on what? Based on the fact that Chris Moore had, like, 12, 120 yards last week or something like that? I don't remember his stat off the top of my head. But why would Amari Rodgers be the number one wide receiver? He's been on the team for less than a month. I don't know if that's true, but he's been on the team very briefly. Um, No, look, I'm playing game script here. Chiefs are going to win big. Texans are going to have to throw. Two games without Cooks and Collins. Chris Moore has delivered 15 or more PPR fantasy points in both games. That's all. That's it's he's not a must start. I'm trying to think outside the box here, folks. Nobody I think Chris Moore is a very good plug and play receiver if you're stuck. You know, if if you don't love Mike Evans or Gabe Davis and you're, you know, you're you're a significant underdog, you're the six seed playing the three seed, the three seed's the number one scoring team in your league, and you need to, you know, hit some home runs. This is the type of guy that can help you win. But I mean, you know, Heath obviously takes a very logical approach to his fantasy rankings, his projections, and, and logically, it does not make sense that Chris Moore Why? is going to be good. Why wouldn't you project a lot of targets for him in this game? Because it could be a game where, you know, Jeff Driscoll's running a lot of crazy plays, and it could be a situation where Rex Burkhead has a bit. I mean, you know, we haven't seen a lot of consistency from this Texans offense across the board really for the last month. You know, I mean, Nico Collins had some good games. Brandon Cooks has disappeared. You know, it's just they're all over the place. So... I'm with you, Adam. I think he could have a good game. I, yeah. I think you, you you look at the Chiefs, you look at the game script, you look at the opportunity that he has, it's worth the gamble. But, you know, again, this is a, a, a career journeyman that's never had the opportunity like this. Is he taking advantage of it? You know, is he having his Brandon Lloyd moment? Sure. He could, he could clearly, you know, step up and have another big game. But something you, you definitely want to count on? No, you know, no, no. He's, he's not a – um, You know, you said earlier this week, again, to put it on the list of things that you said – 
uh, that you would rank him as a top 24 guy. Will I said he'd be around 24th. This is a list of things that Jamie said incorrectly. Uh, I would downgrade him because I didn't quite realize at the time how involved Jeff Driscoll was playing half the snaps. So I, I think they might want that could be better him. for him. I don't know. It won't be better. I don't well, no, if you go back to what you said earlier in the show about Jeff Driscoll, that if they're throwing a lot and he's not on the field and it is Davis Mills, then he could see 20 targets this week. I mean, no, it could saying. be crazy. If Driscoll's playing half the snaps, that's a bad thing. I don't think he will, though, because I think the Chiefs are going to crush the Texans, unlike the Cowboys last week. The reason, when Jamie said earlier, like, the logical thing is he's not going to get that many targets again. The reason I would say that is because he's 29 years old, and it's the first time it's ever happened in his career. Well, um, he's going to get 11, but he can, how many targets have you been projected for? Uh, probably seven, and he had seven just like a month ago, week 11 against Washington, which is not a very good pass defense. And he turned those seven targets into five catches for 20 yards. Yeah, that could happen. Gabe Davis, the same stuff. No, and Gabe Davis has had more than seven targets once. But this is a great matchup, I, much, much better than Washington. Um, whatever. I'm done talking about that. Start Mahomes. Do you have any concerns about the Chiefs against this surprising defense? Not really. I guess the, the only really guy you got to be concerned about from who's been a must start guy for them during the season is Juju for a couple of reasons. One, you know, you, you've, you've, we've noted this that they just don't give a lot of production to passing games. And he's been, you know, inconsistent, whether due to injury or just, you know, not the same involvement uh, over the last month. You know, he's coming off a good game. Hopefully that carries over. Uh, now, Miko Hardman looks like he's going to be back. So, you know, maybe a couple targets go a different direction. And if they're running the ball with a lot of success, you know, maybe Mahomes doesn't have a 400 yard game, you know, and everybody's eating. So, Juju's, I, I think, a, a very good number three receiver. Um, not a slam dunk, though. Unless, unless, of course, like you noted, you know, Nelson and Stingley are both out. I mean, the last five healthy games for Juju Smith Schuster, he's had 18.8 or more PPR points in four of them. Uh, Buffalo, San Francisco, Tennessee. You're including the Bengals game as an injury game. Oh, I think that's the bad one. That's the one of the five. Two bad ones coming back from the injury, but I wouldn't count this Bengals game as a healthy game because I think he played 30% of the snaps or something. Oh, no. No, that was just the game where Mahomes threw for 223 yards. That was the bad game I was talking about. Okay. I guess the one before that I didn't count as a healthy game. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm sorry. No, right. That does not include the Rams game where he played like 38% of the snaps or something. Okay. That's a hell of an Azer stat. Yeah, fine. His his last five games was like a regular it's snap share. An <laughs> 18.8 or more PPR fantasy points in four or five games. You guys are crushing me today. I do not deserve this. <laughs> uh, okay. Sit the Texas. Can you make any case for Rex Burkhead here? Like, would you start him over Ken Walker? I'm not, I'm not there with him, but I, I think you can make a case that, you know, when you look at some of the questionable number one guys, so let's say it's Pierre Strong, you can make a case that Burkhead's in a better spot because he has one game this season where he was the featured guy. It was week one, and he got 12 PPR points, had 14 carries in that game. I think it was five catches in that game. You know, didn't do a lot with it. Uh, Damian Pierce was on the, on the team then. They just didn't use him. If you go back to that game against the Colts, which at the time we thought the Colts had a really good run defense. So um this is a game where i think if he's going to be involved in the passing game which you can clearly see as as the potential now it could be a gumbo wale so i i wouldn't you know put any any stock in it being a a a slam dunk um but if he's if he's getting you know the the chance to play on passing downs and knowing that they're going to be chasing points and knowing how bad the chiefs have been against pass catching running backs there is a path to success for him so uh, i don't mind him in the same vein of chris moore you know there's a lot of guys for the texans that could be home run hitting type of guys for you that can absolutely whiff Driscoll, Chris Moore, Rex Burkett. They're all high ceilings, very, very low floors. Yep. Yes. I acknowledge Chris Moore is a very low floor. Arizona's at Denver stat of the game. Number one in six games with Colt McCoy over the last two seasons, James Connor has scored 13.4 or more PPR points in all six games. And how about this? 21 or more PPR fantasy points in four of six games. Gets a lot of passes from Colt McCoy. He's been really good. Stat of the game number two. Okay, this is interesting here. As you look at Latavius Murray, the Cardinals have allowed 17 or more PPR fantasy points to a running back in seven of their last eight games. Does that do anything for you, Heath Cummings? It's hard to go back to him after last week, and especially the way that the Broncos kind of went away from him. And, and like they were trying to give Mike Boone more work early. They gave Marlon Mack more work late. His snap share went back down to around 50%, which is what he was playing with Melvin Gordon. I think he's a high-end flex. I would rather start him over Rex Burkhead. I'd rather start him over Pierre Strong. Um, but it's not. I'm not very excited about it. 
Okay, Latavius. Well, I mean, there is no more Mike Boone, so that's good. You know, I I think just from a playing time standpoint. Um, Marlon Mack, I don't know if he's the same threat because you go back, you know, before Boone was, you know, part of the team after they got rid of Gordon, it was definitely a lot of Latavius Murray. And so I'm curious what they did in the in the start. It was against the Jets, right? When Rippon started? Yeah. He threw 40 something passes against the Jets. Right. But how'd the run game look? Because Gordon was on the team then and Murray was on the team, right? But that was before Murray joined the team. Honestly, don't remember. I just know Brees Hall got hurt in that game, but I can try to find that for you. They lost 16 to 9. Melvin Gordon led the team with 33 rushing yards. Latavius Murray did have a touchdown, but it was eight carries, 24 yards, and a score in the passing game. He had three targets, two catches, negative one yards. Yeah. That might have been his first game with the team. Maybe. So, all right, let's let's go through this game quickly here because there are second game of the team. Uh, Ken Walker or Latavius Murray was my question. Walker. Keith? I've got Walker one spot higher. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, sit. So the must starts in this game are Hopkins and Connor. And do you consider Jerry Judy a must start? 100% if Sutton is out. Number two, wide receiver. And if Sutton's in? Judy or Sutton, low end number two receiver. Yeah, maybe maybe be right around twenty four, right in the Chris Moore range. For Adam. Would the <laughs> would the uh, presence and of, is a must guy. Would oh sorry, would the presence of Byron Murphy change anything for you? No. Huh. Okay, Marquise Brown or Chris Moore. Brown for uh, Brown, but it's close. <laughs> what is this all about? Adam looks like the type of guy to say cha 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 after singing happy birthday. <laughs> Fair. Uh, I don't think I'm that guy. I don't think I'm that guy. You're going to do it now, I bet. I don't think I've ever said cha 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 after a birthday rendition. Happy birthday rendition. Okay. Anything else in this game? If, if Russell Wilson makes it back, would you start him? He's 49% rostered. I would not. No. Okay, Murray's a flex, Judy, Dulcich. Dulcich or Ingram, Najoku? Uh, right now I have Dulcich behind those guys because, you know, we've seen some failures in some decent matchups. Um, but he did have his most targets with Brett Rippon under center in that Jets game. And so hopefully that's a, a good sign. Not Sutton not playing is a good sign. Cardinals being terrible against tight ends is a good sign. So, I, Yeah, I got Ingram, Dulcich, Najoku. I think that covers this game. The Denver DST is top eight for everyone. Number one for he uh, for Heath, the Broncos DST. Uh, Cardinals DST is about 12th to 15th. By the way, uh, speaking of tight ends, do you know number one in yards per target is Dallas Goddard? Do you know which tight end is number two in yards per target? Jamie McBride. Um, Okonkwo. Hunter Henry. And that brings us to New England at the Raiders. And Hunter Henry had three targets last week. He turned it into 70 yards against the, the uh, Cardinals. Um, New England at the Raiders. Okay, Heath, give me the 15-second overview of starts and sits for this game. Uh, if Obviously, Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams are must-starts. Um, if Darren Waller's back, you're probably starting him as a low-end starting tight end. I'm not sure I'd call him a must-start. He'd be behind Dulcich for me. Uh, there's not a must start on the Patriots unless Ramondre Stevenson's back. We did the breakdown of the Patriots running backs earlier. I like Nelson Aguilar as a number three wide receiver if Jacoby Myers and Devontae Parker are both out. What if Jacoby Myers plays and it's sort of trending that way? Does, where does he receiver. rank with, say, Mike Evans and Gabe Davis? Just behind. Right. I mean, this is becoming a really good matchup. The Raiders have allowed... I, I would put him ahead in PPR. Okay. The Raiders have allowed 76 or more yards to a wide receiver in six straight games. Christian Kirk, Paris Campbell, Sutton, Metcalf, Keenan Allen, Ben Skoranek. A lot of slot receivers in there. Um, I kind of like Aguilar if one of the two guys are out. If both play, I, w- I would not look at him, but um, would not be surprised if he uh, has six to seven targets, regardless of, again, one of the two being out. I'd like him more if Myers is out. But a uh, revenge game for him, too. He spent a year with the uh, Raiders. Yeah, a good year with them. <clears throat> okay, Damian Harris is now 70% rostered. So let's do this real quick. If Ramondre Stevenson, done your job. 
Yeah, he was 69% when I tweeted. Now he's, he's 70. 67 on, on Tuesday. Hey, all right. Uh, if Ramondre Stevenson starts, he would be a top blank running back. 12. Top 12. Lower than normal, but still top 12. If Damian Harris plays and Ramondre Stevenson is out, Harris would be a top blank running back. 18-ish. 20, but yeah. If Harris and Stevenson are both out, your favorite steel, your favorite Patriots running back would be blank, and he would rank blank. Pierre Strong, low 30s. Pierre Strong, around 30. Uh, Derek Henry, or sorry, Hunter Henry is Derek Henry or Hunter Henry, guys. Uh, Hunter Henry is now facing another good matchup. The Raiders have it's allowed. actually really not a good matchup. 26th against tight ends, 57 yards or a touchdown to a tight end. very skewed. Games. By two games from Gerald Everett, one monstrous game from Travis Kelsey. Yeah. And they really have not been that bad against most other tight ends. Yeah. Well, Ertz had 75 yards, Aiken oh, 60 sorry, yards, Granson 40. You're there, right. There's, there's four tight ends that have had 10 or more PPR points against them. Jeff Swain was one. Ertz was one. Everett twice, so five times. And Kelsey. Right. But Kelsey's game, I think, is kind of what pushes this number That's down toward it. They have not allowed a touchdown since week five when Kelsey had four of them. Yes. And and Hunter Henry, while I think was worth the gamble against the, the Cardinals and did not crush you with 10 PPR points, he has two touchdowns on the season. He hasn't exactly been lighting it up. He hasn't been commanding a lot of targets. So could he score? Sure. But, you know, I, I would take my chances with Taysom Hill this week. I would take my chances in non-PPR with Jeff Driscoll over him. And, and I'm claiming victory. Chiga Conquo does have more yards per target than Hunter Henry. Oh, does he? He's just not qualified? One of them has 42 targets. One of them has 31. So the cutoff must be somewhere in between. Oh, those wow. Two. Okay. Oconquo, yeah. I mean, Oconquo and Hooper, we're going to talk about that game shortly, but they have almost the same dot. And Oconquo is averaging about five yards more per catch after the catch. So he's a, he's making some plays. Uh, he's anyway, more athletic than Austin Hooper. The last guy, the last guy to talk about is Derek Carr here. I think we'll talk a little more about Waller, but um, you know, obviously coming off a real terrible game. But the five games before that, he was the number five quarterback in fantasy. Do you guys have Heath? Do you have any faith in Derek Carr this week? I do not. I don't want to start him. He's a number two quarterback. Uh, I think I've got him around 18th. Don't like the matchup very much. Um, I think it's going to be a low scoring game. Okay, Jamie feels the same way. He's got him about 18, so you can sit Derek Carr um, and Darren Waller. So st- did I ask you Darren Waller questions already? I keep getting mixed sort up. Sort of. You keep asking us, would he be top eight-ish? Um, I, and Heath has said top 12 because he's Darren Waller. I, I think you got to be a little bit concerned about long rust for a leg injury, but it's hard if you've been sitting on a player like that and playing sort of tight end roulette to not play him. So the, I think the tough calls would be, like a Chigo Conquo, if there is no Traylon Burks. I could see it being a tough call with Dolchich, for example, just because, you know, he hasn't exactly been consistent. Um, you know, if you're concerned about the matchup for Ingram, for example, you can make that decision. Njoku, you can make that decision because you've picked those guys up along the way potentially. But um, the Patriots have struggled at times against tight ends, you know, more early in the season than later, than lately. So hopefully he delivers. I, I'm, I am curious, though, to see, and, and this this does impact Derek Hart, Um Hunter Renfro could play. And now you have clearly what is going to be maybe his best set of weapons ever, certainly since, you know, Crabtree Cooper of Adams, Waller, Renfro, what Matt Collins has become as, you know, the the fourth or fifth option. Josh Jacobs out of the backfield. There's a lot to throw at the Patriots with Josh McDaniels in a revenge game. You know, so he may be he may be better than we're giving him credit for. So it's easy to look at what happened last week and and him, you know, vomiting all over himself, but he could easily bounce back at home against the Patriots. They haven't exactly been lights out. They're just gonna if they hit him, he's gonna be in trouble. And they hit him, you know, their second second best pressure rate team in the NFL. Okay, let's go to Baltimore, Cleveland. By the way, Jamie does not like the Patriots DST. Heath does quite a bit. The Patriots are the Ravens are at Cleveland here. I, I should move them up a little higher. Okay. Uh, the stat of the game: running backs are averaging two point five five yards per carry against the Ravens. In five games since the Roquan Smith trade, ah, so I'm sure Nick Chubb is a little lower than usual. But Jamie, where'd you come out on Nick Chubb? 
I've sort of waffled a, a little bit this week between like 12 and 15. You know, I've gone back and forth with like Pacheco, for example. Um, Dalvin Cook was obviously not playing very well and, you know, his his situation. I probably should move Cook higher than, than Chubb. But he's not scoring. And certainly in the two games since Watson has been there, he's not been productive in the two games since Watson has been there. And so now taking on this this defense, it's it's a little concerning. Yeah, so I, I think Nick Chubb is a is a contrarian play in DFS if you want to call him that. But you're clearly not benching him unless you're you're loaded. But it's uh it's 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 tough. Yeah, high end number two running back for me. He's one of those guys that you're worried because he might give you a dud and knock you out of the playoffs. But you can't be worried to the extent to where you might start somebody else over my own play. Yeah. Yeah. He's had some really Nick Chubb has had some bad game scripts. I talked about this yesterday. He's getting blown out a lot or, you know, a game like an eight point loss to the bills was, it was a 15 point game in the fourth quarter and he's just not getting a lot of carries, but they should be competitive in this game, especially if it's Anthony Brown at quarterback. And that would bode well for him because the last two times they were competitive, he got 20 something carries against the bucks in a win, 18 carries against the Texans in a win. Uh, you just want to see the work better. Okay. I, so Amari Cooper is at home. <laughs> Woohoo! Starter sit, Jamie. Uh, I don't have him as a start. So he's a starter in three receiver leagues. Uh, it's hard to go against the home production. He's just been amazing. But this is also a really good secondary. And, you know, we've seen this. You know, the, the Dolphins game, for example, Xavier Howard was was made things tough on Cooper. Um, he's not played well the last two weeks. He has the hip injury that he's dealing with. And so he's not 100%. He's not practicing very much. So we could have a Deshaun Watson problem for Cooper. We could have a, a defensive problem for him if Marlon Humphrey decides that that's the Ravens decide to do, that they're going to put Humphrey on him. So I don't think it's a easy layup for Amari Cooper. That being said, every time he's been at home, he's been just fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so would you start Jerry Judy or Amari Cooper? Uh, I have Jerry Judy, I think, in the top 12 and, and Cooper like 26. So. Okay. Heath, would you start Gabe Davis or Amari Cooper? Amari Cooper ahead of Gabe Davis. Um, they're in a very similar range, though. How about uh, Donovan Peoples Jones? Low end number three wide receiver, boom bust play, right in that Mike Evans range. It's it's a good time to be Donovan Peoples Jones with Cooper banged up and facing a defense that you know as recently as three weeks ago gave up a huge game to Zay Jones. So coming off a game with twelve targets, he could he could be the guy that that Watson favors right now you know so we'll see i went into the week saying i would start donovan people's jones over gabe davis but i i'm not doing that anymore but as i said earlier i'm sitting both of them for uh give montgomery yeah you don't need to do that because you got chris moore you can just start i wish i I wish (laughs) if only i could be so lucky you better root against me heath because i'm coming for you in that league mr undefeated the idp league Hmm? yeah there's a couple other teams i'm a little bit more concerned about but I'm your next matchup, so. Probably not. Uh, hey! <laughs> yeah. Think you against me? No, I'm not. Uh, big, well, I mean, you're six and eight on the season. Uh, you know, <laughs> coming on strong, though. Uh, David <laughs> Njoku is. Imagine if you still have McCaffrey. At least I have Tom Brady. David Njoku is higher for Jamie than he is for Heath, but he's top 12. Unless you change that. He's top 12. Uh, seven, 12. He's 12. between, yeah, he'll, he'll be between 10 and 12. Are you have Ocon- oh, so like you right now you have Oconquo and Tyler Conklin, the guys with the onk in their name ahead of the onk over the oak. Well, but if you rearrange the letters into Joku, you could get an, a, an onk. Am I onto something here or is that a coincidence? You're onto the fact that it's 10 a.m. already. I mean, let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay, then I guess I won't read the comment about JB from the chat, which is funny, but inaccurate. No, read it, read it, read it. Uh, I'll read it after we finish this game. Anything to say about Baltimore other than start Dobbins and start Andrews? Uh, no. Uh-uh. Okay, people are going to ask about Tyler Huntley. So if he plays, he would be where in your rankings? 15 to 18. All right. Uh, Jamie totally, lo- totally looks like a guy who would flip out on a Starbucks barista. I don't get that at all. The, the, you're definitely the most likely person to flip out on a barista. Me? Yeah. Well, you're Dave, wrong maybe. about that. I, None of us would. I don't drink coffee, so that's a... <laughs> Schneier, a Schneier would. 
Yeah, Schneier Jamie Schneier definitely would. would. <laughs> no, Schneier wouldn't, but no, none of us would. Uh, by the way, Mark Andrews is not the number two tight end. He's like fifth this week. So if you have like, Dalton Schultz, I guess. I, I, I moved him up from where I originally had him with the potential of Huntley starting. Oh, to what? Five. Oh, to five. Okay. All right, last game. Tennessee is at the Chargers. Uh, start the running backs. Start Herbert. Start Keenan Allen. Start Mike Williams. I guess the tight ends are... Oh, by the way, are everybody I said, Henry, Eckler, Herbert, Williams, Keenan Allen, slam dunks this week? Yes. Yep. Okay. So how about uh, how about the tight ends? How about Oconquo and, and Hooper, Heath? What do you think? Uh, I think Oconquo d- does really um, get impacted by Traylon Burks, but assuming that Burks is not playing, but I think it's the, sa- the, the assumption right now, he is right around tight end 12 and has quite a bit of upside because of the downfield profile um, and his plays after the catch. Hooper is a high-end number two between 13 and 15. By the time this show ends, we will know Traylon Burke's status because it'll be Sunday morning. <laughs> it's almost over. This is our last game. Uh, would you start... Um, where's Gerald Everett in comparison to the... the behind for me. Everett is behind. And if Burks plays, you said he'd be like a number three boomer bus guy. Low in yes. number three. Yeah, I mean, the Chargers, they, they don't see a lot of targets. They see, I think, the sixth fewest pass attempts in the NFL, but they're not exactly a great pass defense, and they give up a lot of big plays. Um, so I guess final thought here, Jamie, is on Ryan Tannehill. You've been sort of a Tannehill guy. Are you a Tannehill guy this week? I, I think he's got an opportunity to be um, top 15 quarterback. You know, I, I think it'll be 18 to 20 points. I think that what happened to them last week can easily happen to them again, where Henry gets going in the first half, their defense absolutely falls apart again against Herbert, who looks like he's Herbert again with his weapons back. And then they're chasing points in the second half, and if that's the case, he's going to be throwing. And so then you see a situation where he kind of cobbles together enough fantasy production to be you know, in that 21 to 23 point range. Okay. Uh, update from Don. Jamie drinks two raw, ge- two raw eggs every morning instead of coffee. Now I am uh, Rocky. Apparently. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. No, neither. No, that's disgusting. What is your I morning? Like, I like that Don has such a high opinion of me. <laughs> yeah. Don's a regular in the chat. We appreciate Don. Okay. Don. Uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time. We will Here's talk what we to need, you. We need, we need between today's show and tomorrow's show things that we think Dan would do. Dan's a very nice guy. He would not flip out at a barista. No, it doesn't have to be flip out of a barista. Could see, uh, could be the def- guy says cha 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 to have you. Defend Daniel Jones. <laughs> no, he's anti Daniel Jones. You're wrong about that. Um, all right, we will. Uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow to talk about tonight's game and the NFC home games. There you so, go. Thomas said it best. What What did he say? Dan would run to Twitter and complain about his barista. <laughs> I would let me, Chris. All right, we're out. Later, everyone. <laughs>